Okay, picking up where we left off in the last clip, I realized that I kind of glossed over something, and I wanted to uh, bring that back to your attention and clarify it. When we first loaded the form, it had numbers on there. Then I refreshed it, and the numbers went away, because I had previously edited the CSS for the skin that we're using in this site, which at the moment is uh, style shout refresh, I believe. And in the style CSS, what I had added to get rid of those numbers was this right here. So if I were to chop that out, we'd see it back as we originally saw it when we look at it in the browser. Refresh the page. Oh, it's not doing it. Okay, I think it's because usually when I'm working on my local machine, what I'll do is I will override some settings in user.config that allow this CSS to not be cached so that if I'm making a change while I'm designing it will uh, reflect that in the page right away. It's not what you want to do for production but it is something for designing so I'm looking for the settings from web.config that are relevant and I'll copy them to user.config and override them. That is these two settings right here. So I copy that from web.config into my user.config and I'm going to change those to false so that it won't be cached. Now when I make a change in user.config, ASP.NET does not detect that change automatically, so you have to kind of touch web.config and that makes it reload the settings. And if I go back to the browser, it takes a little longer in that first request because it's recycled the app. But now the numbers are back. So this is where we I kind of glossed over this and uh, didn't really talk about it. But what's happening here is that I'm ch I've changed the way I'm generating forms these days with CodeSmith. Um, in the past, I was generating forms where, uh, or even whether I'm doing them by, by hand without generation. Previously, I wasn't using an ordered list. I was just using a div with class setting row. And most of the places in Mojo Portal still have this, but my, my plan is to change it. I recently listened to a guy talk about, you know, the best ways of doing forms and HTML, and uh, I just liked what he said and the way his approach just seemed better, and so it's an improvement that I want to make going forward, and, and I want to also try to fix it in existing places. But that'll be a little bit of a process, and I'll, I'll have to put some CSS in there for uh, existing skins that I ship with Mojo Portal, and people who are upgrading may have to add that CSS uh, to get rid of those numbers too. So it is a little problematic change and things like this sometimes. But I actually changed it recently in the template itself, where it used to use the divs in this, uh, let's see, table to edit form. And basically, yeah, I added this ol, and I changed this from a div to an li. And so this is what the code in our templates, you've seen us generate, but you can write your own CodeSmith templates, and you can edit this. And in fact, in a minute, I'll talk about something else I want to change in this template. So let's go back to, we want to fix that problem. So in our style, what I added was this. And basically, it's telling it list style none on ordered list with the class form list on it, and li setting row list style none. So we save that, and we are back to no numbers, which we want. So you may need to add that to your CSS if you're following along and your skin doesn't have it. Now let's talk about how we want to lay out this form. Another thing is any form really should be wrapped in a field set. So we want to put a field set here. And closing tag down here. And optionally you can have in a field set a legend. Now, I would want to localize this, but we could just put sign our guestbook. Oh, is guestbook one word or two? Hmm. So anyway, when we make a change here, we don't see it unless we build again, because it has to redeploy so that we can see it. It has to copy it to mojoboro.web. And now if we refresh the page, it's a little bit longer because of the recompile. But you see our field set automatically adds a border, and the legend kind of blends into the border. Now we would probably want to localize that, and we might not need a legend since we have guestbook here in the heading, so it's optional. If I wanted to localize that, I'd, I'd put a literal control here, or 
and then set it from code behind. I don't know as I want the legend, but I wanted to demonstrate this. So a form should be wrapped in a field set that kind of identifies it as a form. And then an ordered list is a, is a more semantic way than just a series of divs to organize the items, but we don't want it to render with those numbers, so we just style it. Suppose we want to have the labels above the uh, inputs. That's a very common user-friendly pattern, and that also boils down to just basically done from CSS. So we'll just start right here. For a label, is the control that we're wanting to style above it, and we're going to say um, if it's in li dot setting row, then display block should do it. That would treat this inline element like a block element, and it would make it wrap. Now we do have some other settings above that probably need to be cleared off of this because we've got setting label float left. So what we may need to do is say um, setting label instead of just saying the tag label, which we could have done, and we may want to go uh, float not or uh, float none to get rid of the float. And let's see what that's done in our page now. Have you desired effect or not? And there, pretty easy, huh? So that was kind of a neat trick that I saw in this video from a, a guy, um, and it kind of made me rethink why I should do our forms that way in Mojo Portal a little bit better than what we've done in the past. So I think that's a little bit better having the label on the top for this particular case. We haven't recompiled, so it still has this because we haven't redeployed the control. All we've done is change the CSS. You know, the presentation I saw, the guy went on to say, you know, you can do even absolute positioning and stuff like that if you need to have some really strange layout, but it's very easy to go from labels on the side to labels on the top. It's simple CSS like that. How are we doing on top? Eight minutes. So that's just talking about, you know, improving the markup of our form, making it a little bit more semantic um, structure-wise. So I'm going to end this clip here, and then in the next clip we'll pick up where we left off and add some more functionality.